Hey guys, it's TFNut. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing another action figure review. This time it's going to be of the brand new Bandai Tamashii Nations SH Figure Arts Naruto Uzumaki, the number one most unpredictable ninja from the original Naruto series. Very excited to have this figure here. The younger Sasuke figure should be out next month. Orochimaru is slated for the end of the year, I believe October, and I believe it has been teased in uh, Shonen Jump's product calendar that they are going to be making an Obito. So that sounds pretty cool. Either way, though, cool to have some more Naruto figures. Hopefully they don't just make Naruto and Sasuke, though. There's a bunch of other unique characters that they need to make for this line, either the regular series or Shippuden. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the packaging. It's pretty standard with SH Figure Arts. It's got some really nice designs. It says SH Figure Arts. They are Bandai Namco. The figure in the box, as you can see there. And then... You have this image right here of toy photography of the figure with some brush strokes covering it as like an outline. And then we get down here. It says Naruto Uzumaki. Again, all that stuff I mentioned. It does say made in Vietnam. Some of the figures for Tomashi Nations coming out of Vietnam factory. Uh, the Vietnam factory so far, like trunks, uh, it has some quality control issues. So we'll, we'll see here. What do we have? The Piro. I believe that's how you say it. Uh, logo there. Naruto. Smash Nations and Bandai logos as well. There is an image right there of Naruto right there with one of those face plates. It does say uh, Naruto over here on the side. And also has SH Figure Arts right there. It also says SH Figure Arts. Naruto Uzumaki again. An image of full body image this time. Really looking nice actually. Of the figure on top. It just says SH Figure Arts and what this line is all about. We look on the bottom, another image of the figure right there. It does say Naruto Uzumaki once again. And then we look on the back here, a bunch of poses and some stuff you can read up there for super action, as well as simple style, heroic action and super modeling. There's some other stuff here. I can't read unfortunately, because I have this imported, but we do have barcode there in case you need it. It also ages 15 and up. Let's go ahead, get this figure out of the packaging. Here's the figure out of the packaging, and so far, I don't have any major QC issues, thank goodness. I have a little bit of, like, some paint splotching here and there, unfortunately. We'll take a look at that in a second. Overall, this is a really awesome figure. Let's go ahead and take a look at all the accessories, then we'll take a close look at the figure. So, pretty on brand with the other Naruto figures, as well as really any other figure in the SH Figure Arts line. We do have a lot of accessories, as you see here. This time, you know, compared to recent releases, we do have... A paper instruction manual, some of them have been digital where it's like a barcode on the packaging and you and it leads to a PDF. Uh, I, I'm not sure if that's the exact same uh, barcode that's used for that. But as you can see here, with all this, it just shows you what's going on with the different hands, how to interchange stuff, how to use the effects pieces as well, and the weapons. The first thing I want to talk about is the face plates. They're all molded very similarly. They all look like Naruto, as you can see here. Let me try to focus up for you there. That is a really good face plate. The painting on there is really good. I think the white on the teeth for this grinning face might be a little too heavy. If you look on the left side, there is ever so slightly a scratch in there or something where they couldn't get it in there all the way. But it's really hard to tell. The lines on the face, all oh, that looks great. The, the paint on the eyes, like the blue eyes come through really well, as well as the eyebrows too. Uh, I think the outlines could be a little bit heavier on the eyebrows just to make a little bit more like it's actually in the anime but it doesn't look bad and then you have the sideburns here as well the ear sculpt is also really good we do have a screaming face similar to the previous face all the line work with the eyebrows and the face markings are all really good as well as you can see the angrier eyebrows there again those eyes are good and this time the mouth is open and the separation of the teeth and the tongue as well as the you know the rest of the mouth all of that looks really good they usually do this really well almost every time i can't recall the last time they've messed this up so that is really sick we also have gritting teeth here in sage mode basically this is not really sage mode actually i forget um this is just when he's you know gets really pissed you guys know what scenes he does this in the eyes the way that, that looks was really good to see in there it's like a little bit of like it's not really dilated, but you can just see just what's going on with the pupils in there. Where it's all red and all that. Looking really good. The, the fangs come through actually really nice. You can, you can tell the actual separation of the sculpting going on there. That is really sick. And the actual the paint for the teeth are really good. And this time the face markings too. All that is really nice. 
Last but not least, the more comedic angry face. Look at all those different teeth separated there. That looks really good. And then it's just very basic white eyes to make it a comedic effect. That looks really awesome. For weapons uh, effects as well, we have the kunai here. This is, I don't have the other Naruto kunai right now uh, from last year, but this is a separate, uh, different kunai because uh, the way that his fists are done, they're all like sculpted, you know, so there's not really a, a gap. You could separate the fingers from the rest of the palm. You do have to pop this piece off and then, you know, slip this through and then pop that back on and it can hold the kunai. I assume Naruto's hands, I believe, are more of an open grip. You have know, uh, Sapuden hands, I guess I should say. Uh, those should be able to work with this. If not, you could just separate, you know, take that back piece part. But, you know, the paint on the actual handle looks good and it's just mostly this black, slightly glossy um, plastic paint, really, for the blade piece there and the belt loop. All that looks good. The Rasengan effect, I believe, is different. I don't have, again, I, I wish I had them, but I don't have the accessories on me right now. You can see the swirling going on here with a little bit of a, uh, a like a frost blue going on in there. And then the rest is a light blue, like translucent plastic going on in here. All of that detailing is really good. All the swirling going on, very sick. You do have this peg piece here. I'll go ahead and start with the hands. Take a look at this hand here. You just line up the shape of the uh, you know effects piece into that hole on the hand. Fits on there just nicely. This hand has a splotch. If we look close enough, I'm trying to find it. There is a little bit of a splotch on the palm in between the middle and index finger. So I don't know what happened there. So that's a little unfortunate. I can try to get that off later, but it's a little risky. But this is just looking at what the back of the hand looks like there because all these hands are done very similarly in terms of the paint and the sculpt work. I think it's like the light might be making the skin tone a little too bright. Fingernails are really nicely individually uh, detailed in there as well as the back of the hands. And you can't see it too well with this because, you know, that effects piece there. But with the open hands here, you can see a little bit of creasing in the palms. I think there's a black speck right there. I might be able to get that off later. Um, well, the, the, all this looks really good. Again, it's kind of like, I feel like it's mostly molded in this skin tone. I think they added a tiny bit of shading in between the fingers at some areas just to kind of bring out some of the details of the hand. Now we also have the uh, claw hands here. These are really good. The white paint. Oh, that looks really, really sick going on in there. There's no problems whatsoever. We also have kunai holding hands, as you see. Like I was talking about, it's all one sculpt, so you can't really separate the uh, fingers from the thumb or anything like that. But it's a perfect circle for that kunai. We also have jutsu hands, the individual, uh, well not really individual, but the index and middle finger sticking out there. Those look really nice, and you can see some of the actually, a little bit of hole going on in there. Some holes in the detailing of the palms there. Last but not least, we only have one of these more clenched hands. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is for the Rasengan uh, effect, but I mean, that's only for the right hand too. So you, these unique hands are only on the right side. So you have this like posing hand kind of like come at me or like some other dynamic posing. And then you have this one here and it just feels like there should be a second one. But if you want, whatever you want to do with this hand, you would just really need to do with these hands too. So we do get a lot of hands no matter what. So just like those previous face plates, this is looking really nice. I'm really digging that grin in there. The paint going on in that crease that's actually sculpted is really good. The face markings are really clean on all my faces so far. I don't think there was a single splotch. I've seen some people that have a little bit of um, missed paint a little bit on Instagram, unfortunately. But the eyes look really good. Again, I think the eyebrow outlines could look a little bit more defined, but it's not too bad. Uh, this face plate wants to pop off just a little too easily, not super easily though now one thing i want to mention is the sideburns also kind of the eyebrows too but the sideburns you know they're going to be a different color compared to this part of the hair now that's blonde and then this too uh i think that was the issue with the shippuden naruto last year as well where that there really isn't that consistent hair at all unfortunately compared to the sideburns but the hair does not look bad I just wish there was a little bit of actual paint in there to be all consistent there was a splotch on one of these poked hair strands earlier it might be up here uh, I think it's actually right here. It's not super visible, but it was visible enough for me to realize it. So that's a little unfortunate. 
this little piece here does rotate kind of like Kakashi's. I think Naruto's from last year also did that too. But of course, the hidden leaf insignia and that headband looks really good. The silver, the black paint on the insignia, and then the blue, all of that comes through really nicely. I really like this collar piece, even though it's hard for the articulation to move around. It looks really good. It's uh, mostly painted in this like whitish color. And it is, you know, it's not uh, a separate, it is a separate piece, but it's not gonna move out really easily. It's pretty much ported in there. So there's that. You do have the orange. I wish it was a little bit more consistent compared to this. This is a different material plastic compared to this. This is a little bit softer, again, even though it doesn't really wanna move around. Same thing with the silver on the zipper. That doesn't look super consistent with how this looks, especially the sculpting, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's not very bad, I don't think. So, you know, all that so far looking pretty good. The, the, the lines in the torso, all that looks really good in the creasing too. And then you have the separation, the blue and the uh, orange here, very clean as well. I'm noticing, unfortunately, there's a paint splotch there. It looks like some shading as well too that they have applied around the uh, armpits. And uh, there's, there is a splotch right there, unfortunately. Yeah, but it's actually really hard to tell with this one. This one is a little bit easier to tell, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to get that off. We do have these separate uh, butterfly joint pieces covering up the joint. It does, you know, it looks a little gappy, unfortunately, because they needed to prioritize articulation a little bit too. Uh, but in some angles, you can move it around and you, you know, push in the shoulders too, and it actually won't, you know, it won't break up too bad, I don't think. The wrinkles going on the arms around the double joint looks pretty good. I just wish they added some detailing in the actual double joint too. But all that paint is rather consistent. I think there's a little bit of shading going on the arms here. And then the skin tone is also pretty consistent. I'm just not a big fan of how much of a ball joint that this looks like. It kind of breaks up the you know immersion of his actual body form for his wrists a little too much. I know this is a little bit of a smaller character. Um, so I kind of can see if they had some problems with that. I just wish it was a little bit more streamlined there. These fists, though, they look pretty good. There's actually a little bit of gap itch in there, too. It's very slight, I think. I, that might be paint. I can't really tell, but my light's turned off, unfortunately. Uh, but that, uh, my back lights, at least. This hand, too, also looking pretty good. I wanted to mention this here. I guess, is this, I don't remember. Is this a slingshot? I don't remember if he had a slingshot, actually. It's been a while since they started to show. But the silver on here is really good. The brown and the yellow. Not looking too bad either. And then we do have this red. I forget what this insignia is, too. But that is molded on. They're really nice. I think on the back here, the orange and blue kind of mix up just a little too much. Well, actually, you really got to look hard to see it. Uh, I think it's mostly apparent on this butterfly joint piece here. Where you see the blue a little bit on there. But you really got to look hard to see it. So a little bit of shading throughout this whole figure. It's just not as prominent in some areas as others. This little waist piece here is very similar to last year's Naruto as well. I don't think it moves around badly as enough as the previous one does. Like that wobbled a little too much. This one can wobble too, but it can keep the pose <clears throat> excuse me, pretty easily in some areas. The pouch system here is similar to last year's as well. As you see, it's on a ball joint, that blue piece there. And then it's just this grayish, almost a little bit of brown in there too, but uh, just mostly this grayish paint on this piece here. You can see the button on there. And it mostly is going to swivel, but it can go a little bit side to side too. And then we get down to the legs. You have this pocket right there, and it's continued in the sculpt on the crotch piece. You also have some wrinkles, and then you have this long seam line going on there. Now, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to hope that this is going to pop back on. But this is how they did the leg system. We'll talk about articulation in a second. So it's not like a stand. I don't know if, they're, if SH Figure Arts usually does this, but other companies, you know, they'll do like actually like plastic, like Marvel Legends peg will go into the socket. This is a nail going into this part here that I think eventually will strip. And then when you try to line it up, you'll have to push it a little bit. Lining it up, you can get it to rotate back in there too. However, I am still not that big of a fan of how they did this because if you rotate this leg, it's still kind of not really going on in there, but it's still it's secure enough. If you rotate this leg enough like this, it will have that problem. You're going to have to, in order to have a tighter you know, fit of this thigh split, but you're going to have to rotate it like this from now on. So that way it's more secure. That's kind of insane to me that that's 
how that is. I don't really know if I like... Actually, I know I don't really like that very much because my legs are a little loose probably because of that. Uh, we do have some shock oil in this area too, I guess, to uh, make that a little bit... Uh, a little bit more of a better movement, I guess. We do uh, have a little bit of shading again, like I talked about. Some areas are lighter, some are darker, going on the legs there too. And they have a little bit of a seam line continued and increasing actually on this joint, so that's pretty cool. But you do see, and this is, uh, this is not exclusive to this figure, other SH figure arts have this. The metal joint is coming through a little too much. This little strap piece with the wraps too, all that looks pretty good. A little bit of black bleeding onto the white, unfortunately. But this little uh, pouch piece, that button, yeah, all that looks pretty good to me. A little bit of white going onto the orange too. This is the back with the creases of the cuffs of the pants look like. We do also have some pretty consistent skin tone on here. Uh, I guess if I could bring out a hand. Yeah, it's pretty consistent. That's good. And we do have these blue boots going on here with a lot of creasing going on. And then they did decently enough paint the skin tone on the toes. When you bend it up though, you're going to see that skin tone, unfortunately. So the back of the boots look like there. And the bottom with the treading, all that looks really good. So biggest issues are how they've engineered the legs. I don't like how they did that at all, if I'm being quite honest. Everything else about this figure besides a few paint splotches, it's pretty decent, actually. For articulation, we have a dumbbell joint. It does have some articulation also going into the body. That's how it looks like it's popped off. That hair piece is stuck on there. The head articulation is I'm just telling you right now it's not amazing because of this collar piece so if we get the body all the way up that's the how the head looks so it looks pretty good but if you need him to do more running poses you'll have to lift up your torso for that uh, as you've been the torso too much it's not gonna look that good and down because of that collar piece you can maybe shift it a little bit but that's that's kind of bad swiveling is a little difficult just because his hair is so spiky but you do get that side to side all that is pretty good we do have the butterfly joint here. It's a little tight on mine, so maybe some shock oil would come a long way, but it's working pretty good right now. Nothing too worrisome. That's all that range of motion going on in there. It is really nice. We do also have arms that go all the way around, and then we they can go out all the way, and then that extra joint going in there allows it to go up all the way. That's awesome. Swivel here at the arm. Some people have reported wobbly arms like the trunks from last month and the arms popping out easily. Mine don't do that. Just wanted to let you know, we do have a double jointed elbow. We do have the standard wrist articulation for Tamashi Nations, as well as a lot of other imports figures. Two separate ball joints at the waist. Adding that articulation goes forward. The back could be a little bit better. We can get some pretty decent side to side and then rotation. Just be careful that this ends up not getting too hyper extended though. But we do have pretty good rotation all the way. So I'm digging that. We don't have a drop down system, but it, you know, we do kick out pretty well. Could go back a little better, but not too bad. And then we do have perfect splits actually. And then that sculpting looks a little off, but you can see some of the shock oil in there too. Not too bad. Upper thigh swivel again, be careful with these. Double jointed knees. We do have a ball joint going on here. So it can actually move around a lot. And then we have the down motion, the up motion on the ankles. And we do have ankle rocker and then toe hinge. So measuring out the figure, let's get the ruler out here. We're looking at about, I think, under 13 and a half centimeters. So that's going to put this around under five and a half inches. It's about half an inch shorter than the previous Naruto from last year, as you see there on the left, which actually turns out that Naruto comes with a little less accessories than the new one here. And as you can see, Kakashi is going to be taller than both of them. So I think it's definitely over half an inch tall. Over on the far left, Retro Collection Spider-Man from Marvel Legends is going to be much taller. I think almost a full inch and it is going to be a shorter figure uh, this new naruto compared to a black series figure like the first mando overall i do think that this is a pretty nice figure i think that there are some things that could be better about it i'm not a fan of however that leg system is done after unscrewing them maybe i shouldn't have unscrewed them but still it's gonna happen with some people my legs are a little too loose now it's still keep a pose but it is concerning that that could end up even more loose over time. I am not a fan of how they did that system. I don't think a metal screw going into plastic is the smartest idea here. But everything else about this besides, you know, some paint splotches here and there, pretty nice figure overall. It has a really decent articulation, just tight in some areas, you know, mostly in the shoulder. So some shock oil probably is gonna need to be applied in some areas, but not too much. 
I do think all the accessories are really nice. I can't think of what else this figure come with. It comes with a lot of amazing stuff. The articulation and posability on this thing is rather awesome. It is a very fun figure to mess around with. If you get multiples of these because it is a cheaper figure, it's going to be cool to do uh, Shadow Clone Jutsu and all that. It's going to be a really good time regardless if you get multiples or one. I uh, just wish it had some better things about it. But QC, not too bad here. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comment down below. Just think about the figure. Think about the review. Leave a like. Share amongst your friends. Follow me on Instagram for more content over there. And I'll see you guys later.